Self-proclaimed as the internet's busiest music nerd, Anthony Fantano is the guy in glasses and a red plaid shirt who built his brand off music criticism into a YouTube channel called The Needle Drop that has over 4,000 videos and 2.7 million subscribers. Typical album reviews on The Needle Drop feature Anthony Fantano's humor, honest takes on his least favorite and most favorite tracks, and then the part that often gets him in hot water with artists, his rating with 10 being the best, and one being the worst, or the often not good. Not only is it rare for reviewed albums to get a 10 out of 10, but 9s and 8s don't happen very often either. In other words, he isn't selling high scores or reviewing albums to stroke the ego of artists and become their best friends. He's sharing his point of view that comes from critiquing album after album for well over a decade. In fact, Anthony Fantano even has to remind his audience at the bottom of each YouTube post that, y'all know this is just my opinion, right? Sure, there are going to be some rap fans that aren't too happy with the Nas Magic 2 album getting a 6 out of 10, or Russ's Zoo and Lil Wayne's The Carter 4 each getting a 3. Then there are some rappers that took issue with Fantano's reviews of their music so seriously that they went out of their way to address him publicly. Eminem has uh, watched my videos and is uh, instructing people close to him <laughs> to not worry so much about what I say. Oliver Tree, comedic rapper and artist that has built up a YouTube base of over 5 million people, was invited by Fantano to appear on an episode of The Needle Drop to answer questions from fans about his 2020 album, Ugly is Beautiful. Things went left when Oliver Tree was asked some personal questions with Oliver turning on Fantano and saying, I put so much time into this music and for some guy who's never made music before to try to tell me how to make my music, yeah, of course I might get a little offensive. I've been working on it for 20 years. Things escalated to the point that Oliver Tree and Anthony Fantano cursed each other out and Oliver stormed off of his webcam and hung up on the live stream. Apparently, Oliver Tree was already offended that Fantano only gave his album a 7 out of 10, which is pretty high of a score, and we also don't know how scripted it is considering with Oliver Tree you never really know what's real or not. But this wasn't the first or last time that Anthony Fantano found himself mixed up in a conflict from his music reviews. Drake is one rapper that hasn't shied away from responding to people that have tried to shame him or his music. Recently when Donald Glover who also raps under the alias Childish Gambino, confessed in an interview that his 2018 hit song This Is America was originally supposed to be a Drake diss, it didn't take long for a response to come back his way. During the opening night of Drake's It's All A Blur tour, Drake stood on stage in front of his audience and called the Childish Gambino song This Is America overrated. So it should come as no surprise that the opinions of a popular music reviewer like Anthony Fantano that has reviewed all of Drake's albums would find his way onto Drake's radar especially when the ratings haven't been the greatest. Only one Drake album has gotten higher than a 6 out of 10 from Fantano, and that is, if you're reading this, it's too late. That was rated an 8 out of 10, which is Drake's best album, I will say. Take care, what a time to be alive, and her loss all got a 6. Nothing was the same, more life, and so far gone, all got a 5. Scorpion and Views got 4s. Certified Lover Boy, Care Package, which isn't really an album, and Dark Lane Demo Tapes received 3s and honestly, never mind, was roasted with a not good review. Very accurate, right there. Being that there's a difference between a 0 out of 10 and a not good review, how does Anthony Fantano define an album like Honestly Never Mind that he rates as not good? Fantano says these albums are non-starters. They're so thin on value. They're so thin on ideas. They're so thin in uh, entertainment value. I'll say entertainment value. That they're not even really worth deep listening, deep discussion, deep anything. Fantano shared a video showing messages that Drake allegedly sent him on Instagram about making vegan cookies. Anthony, it's Drizzy. I know we don't really see eye to eye about music and that you're not the biggest fan of most of my albums. Thanks for the kind words on Take Care and if you're reading this though. But it is what it is, you know. Can always hope you'll like the next one. But I'm not messaging you about your videos, I'm actually messaging you because I found a really great vegan cookie recipe I'd love you to try. I'd really appreciate it if you could give this a spin and let me know if it's worth trying myself. Appreciate you, Drizzy out. These messages ended up being just an entertaining trolling effort, which must have worked because Drake responded with real messages that he had sent to Anthony Fantano, incorporating Fantano's rating system from the needle drop. Your existence is a light one, and the one is because you're alive, and because you somehow wifed a black girl. I'm feeling a light to decent one on your existence. Anthony Fantano kept the momentum going as he responded to Drake's response on Instagram Live by saying, 
One of the artists who I've reviewed the most over the years is Drake, aka Champagne Poppy. And yeah, essentially what happened is that, for reasons unbeknown to me, Drake was in his feelings, as he does tend to be because that is his nature, that is his vibe, that is his style, that's his whole thing. Being in his feelings. That's his brand, you could say. He was in his feelings Wednesday night, very late into the evening. I was in this garage lifting some weights when I caught a DM request from Champagne Poppy himself. I saw the DM request and I looked at it and yeah, it was a bit of a diss. It was a salty little DM. It was quite sad and unfortunate. A couple of things were running through my head. One, why is Drake messaging me? I'm not 18 years of age. That's kind of weird. Second thing I was thinking, this man is familiar enough with me to know my rating system. Seems a little odd. Seems a little obsessed. The other thing that I was thinking is that, why did he say the light one thing twice? Is that him trying to work a chorus into his song? Is this a bit of a rough draft or something? I don't know why he said that weak line two times. It also made me think, this is why he has ghostwriters. Anthony Fantano roasted Chance the Rapper's debut album The Big Day with a 0 out of 10 rating, which prompted Maryland rapper Logic to speak up on Chance's behalf. Logic began his statement by making it known that he and Fantano are actually friends, to make it clear that he had no malice towards the needle drop. Then stated, You just look so unenthusiastic, that's all I'm saying. We're like 3 seconds into this, and I'm already going in. Me reviewing Anthony reviewing is a great thing, and I think I'm going to do this forever. Like, that's always been a weird thing for me to see Anthony do where he will review artists he doesn't like. So to me, he's already biased, like he's not going to like it. 22 track torture chamber? God damn, dog. Yo, Chance, this man's a hater. I don't agree with how Anthony Fantano said a lot of what he said, but he was entertaining, honest, brutally effing to the point. Took his time to get into why and what he didn't like about it. Do I think he was too brutal? Yes. Do I think he was mean? Yes. Do I think that's what makes him great? Yes. Then Anthony Fantano was later shocked when he heard the way in which Logic spoke down about him on Logic's 2022 album Vinyl Days on a song called La Donda, where Logic rapped about Fantano being a plaid shirt wearing mother effer who Logic quote fantasized about murdering in the past. Anthony would then address the lyrics by saying, I feel overemphasized. There never should have been any reason Logic should hate me in the first place, because I'm just reviewing albums. You're just one of many guys whose albums I review negatively. One of those negative reviews was for Logic's album Confessions of a Dangerous Mind that Fantano gave a 1 out of 10 review, and the project called Supermarket that Fantano shredded to pieces with a not good score. Post Malone has proven to be sensitive to criticism that his music has received as he's risen with viral hits like White Iverson, Rockstar, and countless others. After Anthony Fantano grew tired of receiving a mass amount of comments from his viewers who kept requesting that he review Post Malone's album, he instead did a video of only 50 seconds where he introduces the album, then decides to leave and go watch a cartoon instead. Which is consistent with the behavior because at that point, Anthony Fantano had never even liked Post Malone from the moment he came into the game. When Fantano did get around to rating Post Malone's debut album Stony, he attacked it with a not good rating and seemingly triggered a back and forth feud with Post Malone, who started retweeting people that trash talked Fantano. On December 14, 2016, Post Malone tweeted at Anthony Fantano's The Needle Drop Twitter directly by saying, If you give J. Cole a mediocre rating, I'll take it as a compliment. To okay. which Fantano responded by saying, See, every cloud has a silver lining. Post Malone got upset with Fantano's sarcasm and said, And every Anthony Fantano has a blank tickler. Tyler the Creator's issues with Fantano began with Tyler's Cherry Bomb album that was released in 2015. Fantano's review came just over a day later after the album was released, saying that Tyler consistently impresses and disappoints on his projects, and gave the album a rating of about 3 out of 10. Tyler posted a pair of tweets that seemed to be aimed at Fantano, complaining that how can an album be properly reviewed in only 30 hours after it was released. Tyler also implied that Anthony Fantano only gives good reviews to rap albums about black power or trappin', with Tyler's music not falling into either of those categories. Not only has Eminem not taken kindly to pop stars and other rappers judging him, but he has had something to say about his critics in the more traditional sense of the word. One of the Eminem albums that Fantano gave a particularly low score to was Revival, Nightmarish album, which got hit with a 2 out of 10. When Eminem was featured on a 2014 Busta Rhymes song, Calm Down, Eminem took a jab at what he considered to be judgmental bloggers, with many fans thinking that his comments were being aimed at Anthony Fantano, the internet's busiest music nerd, even though at that moment in time, Fantano hadn't been that critical of Eminem's music, nor was he even that popular. This didn't stop Anthony Fantano from jumping in with his own content and releasing a satirical video 
pretending to be mad about the situation in an exaggerated voice. But Eminem did come at critics later on, pretty much all of them, when he dropped the album Kamikaze, so it could be said that that one was most likely aimed at Fantano and many others, considering he name-dropped other people who are in the same realm. When Anthony Fantano reviewed Killer Mike's album, Michael, he criticized what he considered to be, quote, confusing political reviews on Killer Mike's first non-Run the Jewels album in 11 years. On his Needle Drop YouTube page, Anthony Fantano gave Michael a 6 out of 10 score. At one point in his video, he even seemed to accuse Killer Mike of being a hypocrite, stating, If you're familiar with Killer Mike, you know he's no stranger to throwing political views out there. On previous records, I feel that mostly worked in his favor, but on Michael, I'm kind of scratching my head because I feel like a lot of it isn't fully lining up. Fantano added more flames to the fire in his critique of Killer Mike's Michael album by saying, Are you 12 years old? Are you literally a 12 year old boy? If you took these lyrics and you showed them to me and told me they were some kind of MAGA rapper from the internet, I would have to believe you. Not before long, Killer Mike clearly had gotten wind of Anthony Fantano's comments about his work and responded on Twitter with, his opinion on a life and culture he cannot possibly understand is laughable and shows you the arrogance of the outsider or colonizer. I encourage all to listen and feel something special. Hashtag Michael, a truly black Southern American experience. Lil Xan's album Total Xanarchy became the victim of Anthony Fantano's infamous Not Good rating, stating that the only good elements of the album were the features. Fantano also went in on Lil Xan's limited vocabulary. Wale has had a documented history of publicly addressing people when he gets upset or feels that their opinions on his music misalign from his, such as having static with Kid Cudi, Kendrick Lamar, many other people, as well as media outlets like Pitchfork, Complex, and Twitter for reasons that some are public and some we don't necessarily know why. Anthony Fantano was treated no differently after Fantano had some harsh words for the song My Love from Wale's 2017 album Shine. Not only did Fantano call My Love one of the quote worst rap songs he heard that year, but he also labeled it quote one of the ugliest attempts at capitalizing on the Caribbean craze. Wale was so offended that he corrected Fantano by saying, wow man, ugly attempt at Caribbean? Man, that's Afrobeat. That's my Niger culture. I was born into this sound. This is our sound. God forbid a Nigerian make Niger music with Wizkid Ayo, one of the most successful Nigerian artists on the planet. At the needle drop, played yourself. Fantano doubled down on his point of view on the production of Wale's song My Love by stating, On this song, you featured and credited Diplo by way of Major Lazer, a trio known for fusing Western pop music and house music with Caribbean music, with dancehall, with reggae, and that vibe comes through on this track, and I'm not sure why you're not hearing that. And even Vince Staples, who has had his own feuds with Anthony Fantano chimed in on the Wale versus Anthony Fantano feud that was brewing online and encouraged the two to fist fight it out, which was a level that the disagreement never really elevated to. I don't think it's going to change in the near future that rappers or artists in general come at Anthony Fantano, but it's interesting to see that he's elevated to such a point that even the top rapper in the game, Drake, has addressed him publicly or privately later made public. Make sure to subscribe for more.